So can I, um, can I welcome you um, to what I think will be a wonderful lecture. Thank you very much for, for coming. Um, I think maybe some of you were here last uh, Thursday, I think it was, when uh, we had Barry Bergdahl um, talk about the, uh, the, um, the, the links between the GST and, um, and South America, but also, of course, that links to, to the exhibition. Um, which is currently at MoMA, and I think at that time I did say that the school, with the projects that uh, Felipe Correa has been involved with, with many of you, with other studios, with the studios of, um, of Jorge, before with Rudolfo, others, Ciro Nahle, that there's really a lot of connections between the GSD and what is going on currently in South America, which is, which is very exciting because um, uh, there are so many different approaches um, throughout the the continent, and um, and uh, in some ways, it's uh, it's really exciting to to kind of witness the caliber and quality of the work that's being done. Um, a few months ago, we had a, a, a book launch in. Um, Santiago and then in Sao Paulo, and I think it was there that uh, I got the chance to um, meet Carla and hear her. And, you know, I'd seen some of the work before, and I think uh, um, it's really exciting to be able to hear her tonight uh, present um, her projects. I think, uh, obviously, the, the best-known project of uh, Carla Giosaba is, is this uh, project that you will see, the Humanidad de 2012. And I think in architecture, a lot of the time, we talk about this concept of the scaffold or the scaffolding, um, which I don't know if it was deliberately part of the intention of, of, of this project. But it is, um, it is important to see really the way in which ephemeral structures, lightweight structures, have the capacity for experimentation that sometimes maybe more permanent things don't. And you're able to, to explore and delve into themes and topics that open up the possibility for a different type of exploration of spaces and relations. I think apart from that project, uh, she's of course done uh, a number of interesting uh, residential uh, projects and, and I think today is recognized as as someone who's really doing interesting work, um, um, and because of that, she is really the winner of the first edition of the International Prize Arc Vision Women and Architecture in 2013. She'll also be here tomorrow, participate in another panel that I think some of the people here are uh, putting together with uh, with an exciting group of people. So please join me in welcoming uh, Kala uh, Joasaba. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, Monsen. Thank you for being here. Uh, I will be showing my work since I was graduating in 2000. It's very diverse work as a scale, but uh, I think with the same reflections. Um, I will begin with this picture of Pina Bausch that is, uh, besides being a beautiful picture, uh, it's full of meaning and interpretations. And it did remind me uh, of a myth that Jane Jacobs associated with our time, which is the myth of Antaios. Uh, Antaios was a myth, Greek myth, of a very powerful giant that when he was not in intimate contact with Earth, his strength, his strength rapidly decline. That means when we lose our contact with Earth realities, we lose our strength. And it's very interesting that she associated uh, with our time because it's, um, uh, we, we have to have uh, contact with, with the reality today to, to act. And uh, I will begin now with the, this pavilion, Humanidade. Uh, this is a picture of Rio, and of course, in Rio we have an obsession for the view. And um, 
and all everything we propose in here, everything we propose in here has to have a terrace to overlook. Has to, oh, that means it's it's a, it's true that Rio is uh, have has an hedonistic culture, and uh, we talk about beauty. We live we we I mean we live this city, uh, uh, talking about the city uh, all the time, uh, and then this building. Uh, is located there at the end of of this uh, beach. It's the, the this headland here. Those are images of Rio, and Rio is a city with six million people, uh, and uh, in the in the six million people is split between those mountains, making these islands, but. Looking at this picture, we don't know who exactly is the island. And uh, they try to contain these islands with concrete walls, but obviously the concrete walls becomes, uh, I mean, the support for the new constructions. And uh, you cannot contain this, you just cannot, it's impossible. And the, this pavilion is, was uh, for the public. It was also part of, of this building was for the public and part of the building was for the event here plus 20. In Copacabana, if you ever go to Copacabana, it's a, it's a place, it's a stage of Brazil where every, all the manifestation happens, all the events. And uh, any time of the year you go, there's a scaffold structure being constructed or dismantled. Any time of the year, there's a big event happen, happening. And uh, this is the headland. And this is what I found when I visit the site. That's what they do twice a year for the events, the plastic tent with uh, air conditioner inside and close it uh, to the view with windows like that. And uh, what I did was to, to profit of this. Uh, we didn't have many time to construct and to build. Then I found this, this, uh, this base of uh, walls with 170 meters by five meters high. And what I did was to take out this, the, the, the plastic tan and continue those walls. And I think this is uh, something of our, of our time to, to profit of what we have in hand, what we have in hand and to profit uh, of the material we, uh, we have. In this case, in Copacabana, it's any time of the year with these structures. And um, and then those walls, uh, those 100 meter, 107 meters by 25 meters, uh, they have this space between them. And then the space between them happened the the the, the program. And it was uh, very very uh, rigid in one, rigid in one direction, but in the other direction it was very open. I mean, anything could happen between those walls, uh, and the design would be the same. I was not worried about the program. I think I told uh, Bia that invited me to to do this building. I said uh, anything you can you want for this for the program is possible, and I don't, I don't care where it is. I mean, there's no study of form. There was a consequence. Of a of a uh, structural propo proposal, and this is only uh, a curiosity for me because we um, uh, the the because the pavilion has this monumental occidental image, but the, but the material is oriental. The scaffold until today is made of bamboo and has this this characteristic of being um, uh, temporary. And this is not this is not ours. This idea of ephemeris is not ours. It's from the Oriental. It's also Indian, but it's not from us. So it's just this this monumental image. But the the the, the presence of the Oriental is there. The Oriental presence is there. And this is a, these are the final sections. And um, it was about the drawings were about. Uh, connections and levels, and there was not much to, to draw in a building. It's, it was 9,000 square meters of building, there was nothing to draw. And uh, only, I only added, the only thing I added as a program was, was, 
was this room that was a room for nothing because the sea is here, so it was like a point of view for nothing. And then the rest was full of things happening. And you can see here the the, the walls rigid, ri um, uh, rigid in one direction, and then the connections in red. Uh, that could be anywhere, it really doesn't matter. And all the paths, I mean, all the, the corridors, the uh, uh, led, uh, the arrived in one place that was the top, that was the roof. The, this immense roof that people met there. And there was nothing to, to think too much about the structure too. There was a beam of 75 centimeters, the other one with two meters 20. And it was just like, uh, uh, working with that, so. And it's kind of pleasant to say that uh, such a huge building with 9,000 square meter did nothing with the soil, just left, it at, uh, left the soil as if it was never there, just left it how it is. And it was like that with over uh, small uh, wooden plagues and that's it. And that was the beauty during construction. And, I, and I, we, we can think today about ephemeral construction. Uh, it's 30 years ago, 40 years ago, it was completely different. Paulo Mendes da Rocha did this incredible uh, pavilion in Japan, in beautiful pavilion, but it was in concrete. We, we can never conceive something like that anymore. We, our, our, our idea of ecology doesn't permit that. So I think the change is, is everywhere. I mean, we, can, we, we don't permit anymore, not as an architect also, but... Uh, and uh, this is the the this is the place for nothing. This is the terra for nothing. So this this immense walls they they kind of had all the time uh, subtract subtraction of material to to find these spaces inside. And uh, of course the the presence of the. The history is there. The, I heard many times that finally someone did what Cedric Price wanted to do, but I think it's correct. I think it's there, but I think the intentions are completely different. And I, I would like to talk about those intentions. I think Cedric Price wanted to to um, um, uh, he wanted to to create an, an image of the future. I mean, a historical. Uh, image of the idea of progress. He, I think he had that in his mind when he was he was projecting all these images because he did images. Uh, and the high tech had the same rhetorical. But what I think the difference is is that at this moment we we uh, it would be it would, it would be an absurd today to create any rhetorical any rhetorical image about any ecological idea. So we cannot. It's not rhetoric. It's 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 dealing what what I had in hand, what the, the what was possible to do. What uh, I mean, the uh, it's there's a connection to to the reality there. Yes, I, this is the this, the writer that I love the most, the Mexican, and I just found the sentence that I love that the, the central figure of our time is now. I mean, it's not, not, it's not a rhetorical image of nothing, it's just now and dealing in uh, direct, in a geographical point and thinking about uh, this reality. And this, this, this corridor already exists. The plastic tent was in this level over the... So it was already beautiful, it was already there. It's nice to think that you just found a project, not invented one.
And I think the city was really moved by this building. And at the same time, we have only one newspaper in Rio. I don't understand a city with six, six million people that has only one newspaper. And this newspaper was against this building. So nobody, nobody knew for six months what was happening there. So they, they, it was silence. And then it opened for the public. And they announced on TV that was open for the public because nobody knew nothing about this building. It was in the because Copacabana for me is the center of Rio. It's not the center. It's the center. This is the center where everything happens. So they were, it was kind of uh, hidden by all the, the media. And um, but after the after the announcement on TV, there was a line of one kilometer to see this building. And uh, it was free to enter. So it's, it shows also a lack of education and offers that we have uh, in Brazil. It's not about this building, this line. It's about anything that is free. It's in Copacabana or anywhere in Rio. So it's not about this building. It was also about this building because there was an immense curiosity of everyone uh, during six months. And this is the, those are the final images of the... the the building, it was uh, done together with Bielessa that had invited me. I don't think I said that. And she did all the interiors, the, the, um, the, the scenography, and together she invited uh, politicians, economists to, 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 to work together about what they're going to communicate inside this building. And it was really bad made. But in the pictures, you don't see that. You see that sometimes. And uh, and it was kind of uh, like everything happens in Brazil like that, like Brasilia. Brasilia was like that. Just put some more, more iron inside the, the concrete to make sure it works. Brasilia was like that. And then we see the price after that. It's no problem. And it was like that. Just uh, The engineer told me, this, those beams, they are... Uh, I don't want those beans, I told him. No, 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 we, ha we have to put those beans because people, the, 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 the building won't fall down, but people will be afraid because it will shake. I, I said, and I will be afraid and put whatever you want. So he put all these beans on the top that I didn't want. So it's, it, the conversa it's this level of conversation. I mean, <laughs> I think Brasilia was like that too. It's like, do put more iron, put more concrete. And then Brazil felt for many years the cost of Brasilia. We, 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 need, uh, we need a lot of years to, 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 I mean, to, with all the costs that Brasilia uh, spent. And, um, and this is the center of the building that Bia did uh, a, a library as, uh, and all the, the political meetings were there. And this is the image that I like the most. That is from Ipanema. You don't see a city. You don't. You don't see that this building is. It could be anywhere. I mean, it's not inside Rio. And also because you don't have well, you don't have leads and nothing. It's just the building without. Uh, it's the back. <laughs> so it's nicer. And I will move to a to a to house of seventy square meters. It was one of the first projects I did. And uh, I think it has a lot to do with the pavilion. I mean, it's, it's the, the, the prince, the prince, um, the, uh, I mean, it's about uh, the structural principles. It's, it's pretty the same, I think, when with uh, walls, uh, lightweight walls, and this one with heavy walls, but everything walls. And, um, I think it's, it's, as I have said, it's curious that the pavilion was made with, with walls, but uh, lightweight and tectonic walls, and this one, in this one bearing walls, but both of them, both of them bearing walls. And um, 
this is uh, really away, f away from Rio. It's a isolated place where the nature is very intense. As every everything in Rio, the the sun is intense, the humidity, the the sound of the river, everything is intense. So I thought that I had to deal with that, and then couldn't be nothing light and delicate. So this house, uh, this all, all this material had very close to this place. So. I just had to, brought, to bring four beans, four iron beans. And I, in what happened, I didn't knew that it was going to happen. That the sun heats the, the, the stone during the day, and during the night this heat comes out of the stone, which was very good for this cold scolder, the weather there. And this is a book that the University of Texas at Austin do for each country in Latin America, and they did with Angelo in this house, the house of Angelo in Rio, in this house. And I'm just showing this book because uh, it's, although it's, it's, it's a very nice book. They went to the place, they, but they asked me for the drawings, and I didn't have any drawings. And, and I didn't know what to say. Then I began to draw the drawings that were never done. And in, in, in years after that, I, I just think, why I did that? I should have said then to them that. But it made me think about uh, the relation with, uh, the with the construction, with the drawing, the real relation. And in this case, uh, no drawings were needed. It was only a description to walls and, and for beams, and, we go, and I go there when it's necessary. So it's, it's, uh, it's the, I think, I mean, the, the, what I thought was that, um, the kind of construction makes you draw like this or like that. I mean, I'm, I'm building a house now with blocks of concrete, but the, the, the system, this system of construction makes me draw a millimeter because I want to be very precise of this block and this, this one doesn't need a drawing. So, I mean, ten, uh, I don't know how many years, eight years after this book, I think, uh, of that. And the, the walls, are, there's nothing inside, so the, the, the stones are structured, and uh, I, I came inside uh, one meters, 12 meters of uh, iron bin. And, uh, and when I showed this project to Frampton, he said, and what did you do with the, if you enter one meter and the, the wall has one meter 10, what do you do with 10 centimeters? And, I think the problem for him in this project was that the, the passage of the material, the iron beam to the stone, was not clear. So there's a problem of connection. And that was nice to hear because I always think this pro project has a problem and maybe it's that. I mean, I mean there's an horizontal uh, protection for the iron inside the inside the the walls, and I should have showed this, maybe show this, uh, this protection, I don't know. And this is a house that I'm constructing at this moment. This one with block that I'm drawing in millimeter. <laughs> and uh, this is the site, and I, and I full of farmyards, the uh, coral like coral like this. And I asked him if I could draw a house like this for him, and he said it's okay, you can do it. And then I, because I don't, I don't have any place for connections too big. So I think this this house uh, should be uh, uh, closed uh, more uh, to the inside, and then this is the this is the building foundation. This is really the building foundation because because the soil is good. So I had to do only um, um, a layer of concrete, very thin, and then the blocks of concrete, and then. I have in the center the living room and the perimeter, the program, the rest of the program with, with uh, balconies. And then on the top, I have again a cross of um, iron beam and then again bearing walls over, the, over this cross. 
this is the the house with the the living room, the kitchen, and in close it in the perimeter with with wood like the farmyards. And this is the the model. And you can see the 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 walls, the bearing walls again. And this is the foundation. At this moment, it's like this. With this, uh, in, in, there is a perimeter of uh, of iron being twisted for for the for the floor and for the roof. And uh, I'll show you now an installation in Mexico City. There's a place in Mexico City. The name is Liga. It's a, it's like a, um, a gallery for architects, so you can show your works or or do whatever you want. It's very free. And I did this installation uh, with with a, um, with magnets, um, golden guitar strings. Uh, marbles, breast profiles with this is one centimeter by one by one, a rubber washer here, and pieces of lead here. So everything is in tension, and it's a, a system in equilibrium with these magnets. And there is only one point of equilibrium. There's not two. So it was very uh, uh, simple. It looks looks simple, but it was very hard to build. Um, and I took like. I took like uh, two weeks to discover that I could do everything because of this rubber washer. And uh, otherwise, everything has to be attached with glue. And I didn't want, I wanted a system in total equilibrium, not attach it. So uh, this is an object that pretends to be a reflection about the act of constructing and about the probity of the materials when they brought together. Uh, this, those are the, f the four uh, positions uh, of the of those beams. This is the 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 poster, and this is the plane of the gallery. You have two windows uh, around the gallery, and this is um, the the leads the um, with two meters forty each. And this is the, the installation. Isostasy is the name, but could have been isostatic. Isostasy is the noun of, of this isostatic. But the sound, it sound, the sound is better. So I choose because of the sound. So I think there is an. It looks it looks calm, but there is an immense effort on this object to make, to to keep it in this state. So it's about this this effort that we have to think all the time of the materials, and uh, and this is a metaphor of everything of any construction in any scale. And uh, I invited a physicist to do a calculus considering the, the weight of the breast profile and, and the strongest of the, the, the magnets. And he did the calculus. I wanted to know the distance between the, distance between the magnets because it was, too, it was too hard to build this object. So I wanted, but the, the calculus arrived after everything was done. And it was perfect. I, I, need, I wanted to know the distance it was five centimeters. And he, he said that it was five centimeters, the, the distance. So, uh, in the conclusion, in the conclusion, he writes, uh, "But this is the calculus, but it might not match to reality, but it did. It was perfect." And I think it's an object that doesn't want only to expose an idea; it wants to be beautiful because it's made of beautiful parts: the magnets, the gold, the guitar, uh, the marble, and it's 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 made of beautiful parts. And it's just not to forget the idea of beauty, because I don't, don't know why we forget about this sometimes. I don't think it was Duchamp that was the, the one that, that uh, brought this idea. 
I think he made beautiful pieces, so it's not about him. And what I didn't realize was that Mexico has earthquakes, and this they they cannot do the static structure in earthquakes, and then everything fall down and broke up and broke in the soil. The group of Paisages Emergentes also did the uh, work there. Very beautiful installation too. And I'd like to, 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 to perceive that, that it's not um, uh, photographable. It's very hard to photograph. There's no material density for that. And I'm going to show now this house in Rio that is, um, was made in 2008. Uh, it is in this border. Rio has this continuous border between the city and the green area. We have the hugest green area inside the city. It is in Rio. So we have this perimeter. This house is exactly in this perimeter, in this border. It is uh, a beautiful place with centenary trees and uh, and I had the desire to not touch the street, to not do anything as an architect. But um, as Avore Caesar said, sometimes construct is to destroy. And that's what happened. I had to destroy something, something that was not there, something invisible, but I had to destroy that. And, um, and, and be very incisive. And this is what I did. I did. I put the, the house in the middle of the, ten, the terrain, cutting the terrain in two, and the the roof with these two beams with, of uh, 24 meters emphasized this interruption, and and the the. The presence was at the end a light that passed by during the day. It was, it was more present than that the the house, and that was good at the end. And it's very um, it was very easy to do this, and or maybe very lazy because uh, it's it's really uh, a structure that we know. It was very cheap too, and. Um, Maybe a, nail, a lazy excuse to, to have the support, very light support in the middle of this terrain. But added to that, added to, to all this, this presence of the, the modernism, <laughs> to this history, we added to that to have one and a half meters of um, roof to protect from the rain. That is very nice for our climate to open the window when it's raining and the light that uh, is very present. And I just found this image, and it's, it's like a, a portico too, with the modern house, and how uh, timeless is this light. I mean, it's not really, really nothing new. And in the center, the living room, and the, the bedrooms, and the, the extremities. So this house is, and the name is House Varanda. It is, is, is lived as a, as a veranda. It's, it's, uh, it's in the center of the, of the terrain. So it's lived like that. Like that. And this is the first house I did uh, when I graduated. And that's one of the reasons that maybe I continued doing architecture because I was working already with scenography and I, and I decided to, to work with architecture, making this house. And these panels are made of bamboo. It's a, it's a material in Brazil 
that we, we use a lot for roof, not for walls, and it's double thickness, and it's um, it's it's flexible actually. So I had to have an iron net inside to make it a straight. Um, this is also in this perimeter, in this border, and uh, a very simple program. And that's what happens in Rio if you distract for a while. The nature comes inside everything, the tubes, the, the, the structure, and you have to protect. This is, this is uh, one or two months of not caring, uh, not, not taking care of the, the surrounding. And this is the Casa Minima, House Minima, the minimal house, 24 square meters. I was not going to show this house here, but since it brought me a few, a few uh, reflections, uh, I decided to show. This is, this is the, the bed, the kitchen, and the bedroom, the bathroom, and this is uh, a deck. And those walls that protect from the, the, the sun that is very intense. It just me think of two things. This is a house 100 meters from the Rio Bonito's house. And, um, and it's, it's completely different. I mean, the soil is just because it's at the top of the mountain, the soil is dry and uh, the sun is strong. So the, 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 it's, it's kind of uh, impossible. He, he, he wanted to do with stone. I said, it's impossible. It just retains too much heart. And, and it's, it's, it's just the, like 100 meters can, can change everything. And I realized that it's sensitive like that. It's, it's, it's um, how close we have to get to a project to, to do it. And how close you have to get to a site, I mean, not to a project. And, And this is what I'm working for the last two years. It's an hospice, a uh, hospital for palliative care uh, for cancer disease. And we don't have hospice in Brazil. This one pretends to be the first one. And um, this is the site, also close to these houses in this perimeter, in this border, with this, this time very accentuated. The green area is our site, and the other side is industry. So. It's really, uh, there's a really difference between the both sides. And so I had to, to create also a protection for this strong side at the other side. And um, th those points in red are the, the centenary trees that was kind of the first coordinates of the project, those trees. Mangueira, manga, I don't know if you know this tree, this fruit. And uh, it's full of them. And this is, this is a drawing uh, of the structure of the of the concrete structure of the beams. The 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 project happen, happens uh, in one almost the entire project hap happens in one uh, floor, and this is a, a suspended floor third three meter seventy from the from the level of the street. And the, 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 the building happens behind a sequence of suspended and translucent walls that you have to traverse to get inside. And these walls uh, are, uh, is, is this limit, emphasize this limit between the city and this industrial area. Just in the center, there's an there's a, um, opening from, that you can see from inside. Uh, a laminated wood crossed the entire building, and it's part of the the the, the structural uh, system. And over the over the concrete the concrete beams, I have the the the, the pillars, the the columns, 
uh, that was that were flexible over agreed. So it made me so since it is a new program in Brazil, we didn't have a, we don't have legislation for that. The pro, the the, um, the program changed many times, and I had to change the project during these two years many times, and then this helped me. So I had. I have in one direction a very rigid, um, very rigid uh, uh, beams, but in the other direction, these points in red, I move it many times. So it's what it was flexible over, over this grid. It helped helped me a lot to to during the process. And in the in blue, it's also um, columns in in iron, but uh, to with this hollow glass blocks that I will show you, this, oh, the entire frontal uh, area. These are, these are the, the entry, so this pro project kind of happened as it was uh, because of a tree or because of the program, and this is, was not, this was not uh, really uh, an intention, it just happened during this, uh, this rigid, um, over this rigid uh, grid. And this is the program, the entry, the director, directory, the, uh, the, the places for the doctors, they, they care in the inpatient rooms. And what the the the, the doctor, doctors asked me to do was not to to not uh, do a building with a large view to to the nature because the impatience don't don't like it. So a sentence like this can define a project. I mean to hear then and uh, those small uh, spaces are because of that. So I could have done uh, a, a project more. Uh, uh, looking at this view of uh, this uh, of this beautiful uh, surrounding, but he said that they don't, they don't feel good with that. So the small uh, spaces are better. And then also they ask for spaces for nothing, places for pose. That's also something that they they ask it for, and it was nice. It was nice to develop with them the program and the ideas and. And this is the the level of the street, but um, but uh, only technical floor. And this is the structure, the the the, the drawing with the the concrete beam, and then in the other direction, those those uh, columns that moved many times, the the wood beams. And this is the, 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 the um, a very popular material in Brazil that the, the air passes by and this is this, this was going to be uh, the, the total fr uh, frontal view of the project and this is the frontal view if this with this section in the in the middle to have the connection at least in one point of the of the building and this is defend the project access to inter installations the slight skylights and uh, in that in Rio we have we are afraid of everything so we don't need a wall the building is a wall so it's it, it was uh, to defend that we don't need a huge concrete wall here the building is already a wall. So we have to think about this in, in Brazil because we are afraid all the time. And this is a house that I'm building at this moment. It's a house inside the city and uh, it's a complete uh, reaction to this perimeter, this horrible ter perimeter. So there is um, this, this open. There's this, this iron beams and then over that the concrete beam. So it was curious because the, 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 the iron beam was made in one week and this, this concrete beam took one month and a half to do, to do it. And it just remi remind me, uh, remind that how artisanal is, uh, is that, how artisanal and, and at the end very expensive to do it. So this is the, uh, this is the, the iron beams, uh, the concrete beams over the iron beams, three meters higher than the level of the street. 
And this is the perimeter. This is a suspended perimeter that protects from this 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 uh, neighborhood. So it creates a, um, a court, suspended court, but a court. This is upstairs, the, li the bedrooms, and then the, 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 the living room, room, kitchen downstairs. And this is um, what I do also, which is, it is um, uh, exhibition design. That's one, this one is in the Museum of Modern Art in Rio. This is uh, uh, jewelry of Brazil. And I think scenography, uh, it's fun to do it. You have like two, to, two or three months of work because in architecture you have three years to construct a house always considering all the process. And, and it's, it's fun, it's, an, uh, uh, um, it's fast and, and it's nice, but I don't really do a relation with, with architecture. I think in, a, in scenography you have to invent a little story to create an image. So the, the jewelry comes from the water and this is, this is pieces of glass that is, that uh, it's a metaphor of the crystallized wa uh, water. So you have to invent a little story to, to create this. And I don't, I don't think architecture has this, this uh, invention for an image. You have to, to be more related to a reality or to, a, to, to where you are, to a budget. To a, it's, it's just very different. So, and I will end up with this uh, uh, room for children. It's a temporary room too, uh, for exhibition. It was inside the context of uh, uh, exhibition of Brazilian art, and uh, it came because uh, this drawing, because of a conversation with Paulo Mendes da Rocha. He was once describing in his office uh, a house that he was he was drawing. He, he didn't show the drawing of the house, but the, it's a house where children could enter from any side and there was doors only for the grown-up. So it, this, is, this uh, space is part of his description. So children comes from everywhere. This pyramid, suspended perimeter is for the, for the drawings. It's to fix the drawings. So one month after that, it was full of drawing. And I wound up with this innocent and beautiful drawing. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think we can make those drawings, those abstract drawings. Our our, our drawings uh, can look abstract, as I as I showed, but they're never. They have this this uh, um, uh, connection always in, with uh, construction with a material. So we don't have this freedom. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you have any questions. Uh, There's a mic. Hi, Carla. Um, Parabéns pelo seu trabalho. Congratulations for your work. Um, it makes me really happy to see someone like you coming here because I feel like it's you representing lots of my colleagues back home who are left in anonymous backgrounds and can never share amazing work that they're doing. And I really think your work is incredible. And I, I want you to uh, talk a bit about this, about... Um, the meaning of uh, an architecture to be continued and uh, our responsibility and accountability as architects to think about an architecture that can be democratized and I see it like your statements are really strong by the, the decisions that you take, like the materials you choose and like you assuming that improvisation is a part of the process and that that's not necessarily a negative thing because that's part of a culture, mm -hmm. right? So 
like what could you say about this uh, and what can we share as Brazilians in terms of uh, showing to other cultures new uh, paths and, and the move for uh, the ways that architecture can go from now and for, mm. you know, you know what I mean? Well, I think our uh, for, uh, we can be uh, as we can be responsible constructing. We can do house of stone, a building with no ca calculus, like the humanidad. So this this is not only about responsibility, but it's about uh, a place where you can experiment. Uh, I think uh, I think Latin America has this, not only Brazil in general. So so we have to profit of that of this. There's possibilities, um, but I, I don't, I'm not sure if I understood the question. No, I just wanted to, you to give a comment on mm -hmm. this, on like your decisions and your, uh, the way that you see, like you assume that that is a part of the process. Mm -hmm. And instead of, um, so, so more like simplifying instead of actually sophisticating, because there is another trend about architecture that intends and forces us to complicate and complicate and complicate mm -hmm. for like a, an imagetic perception of what architecture should be for magazines and whatever. And then you're like mm -hmm. going on another stream showing, oh, this mm -hmm. is what I'm doing. I'm getting a basic material that is like super cheap and I'm doing architecture mm -hmm. and, you know. But I think, uh, I think architects about context. I mean, what you can do there, what you can do. Uh, I mean, Solano is working with brick because there's only brick in Paraguay, so it's about context and conditions, and you have to work about that. And uh, and all this this question about sustainability has to do with that. It's about uh, perceiving a site and work uh, and and in this geographical point, what you can, what you can do there, and that's what. That's what I talk about, 100 meters. 100 meters can change everything. It's so sensitive that it's a geographical point that you have to act and perceive. And uh, I think it's about that. You're not being shy, are you? I mean, I think the, the, pro the projects raise a lot of... Uh, Raise a lot of issues, and I'm uh, I'm curious what you what you find interesting uh, in the work. I mean, one thing is that you didn't really say a lot in terms of your um, your influences or your interest. As was kind of intimated, there is something which is cultural, which is which is like in the water, and it's very Brazilian. But also, you said the influence of of others. Um, can you talk a little bit about like, what are some of the, the things that inspire you and what are some of the influences specifically? I, th I think Brazil was really, with the image of Oscar Niemeyer was too strong and for years uh, no one see nothing else than that. But I think there were a few architects. One of them is in Rio, uh, Sergio Bernardes, and he was really an uh, important figure for me. I think I really did architecture because of him. He, he did uh, important works and big works, like, for example, the pavilion in the, um, uh, uh, the 50s in Bruxelles. Brussels. Brussels. And he did this beautiful pavilion. And he, he, he's the one that... Uh, uh, construct in Rio, and he didn't. He did. He didn't. At this moment, had a beam, for example, and he constructed on the site, and it's more beautiful, of course, than one industrialized one. So he he was very artisanal at the same time. That uh, he doesn't look artisanal, but he was. He, he invented all this, all his process of construction. He invented the size of a brick. He get inside the industry. He invented materials. So uh, at the same time, it didn't look um, artisanal, but it was. And he's, he inspires me a lot. And he, he's not uh, that known. I don't know why. And uh, I remember in the middle of your slides, you showed a picture of Lucio Fontana. Mm -hmm. But you didn't say anything, and you just went to the next picture. 
Uh, I don't know if people are familiar with the work of Fontana. Why mm -hmm. did you put Fontana there? This is part of the whole Arte Povera. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's part of the Arte Povera. I think yeah. Arte Povera uh, is really important in the, uh, for me. And Lucio Fontana needs a knife and a support, and he does everything with that. He communicates everything with two elements and in an act. So, and I choose this picture when I was showing Casa Varanda, there was at the end uh, 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 an act doing the skylight over, the, over this house because uh, it cuts the house in two. It, 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 it was a split, it was, it was an act. And he did that with two elements and I really like this if you have two elements and do everything with nothing. <laughs> So it's about that, the Arte Povera is about that. It's doing constructing with, with nothing. With, um, I think Lina Bobadge had this, he, Lina Bobadge came to Brazil uh, inside this context of Arte Povera in Italy. She came from this context, she arrived in Brazil and she was completely found of all the Brazilian culture that has this, uh, this Arte Povera inside. So she, she represented that, but she exaggerated a little bit sometimes. Uh, but she, she, she was, uh, she recognized herself, <laughs> I think, in Brazil. So. Hi, Carla. Uh, well, uh, one of the things that was very interesting is this project where you really say, well, I don't have any drawing. And could you please ex explain us more about the design process behind that? Because traditional design process, you draw and then you build. But in probably as part of the Latin American culture, mm -hmm. this division between design and build is not very clear. In fact, sometimes design and materiality informs, mm -hmm. uh, in other words, the construction informs this. Yeah, I said that two times. One, in the Pavilion Humanidade for 9,000 square meters, there was no drawing. And then for a house of 70 square meters. And I, and I said it's, it's, it's the same. It's walls, bearing walls. You don't have to. I just draw the, con really, I just draw in the pavilion the connections and the levels and the stairs. And there was nothing to, to, to draw. I mean, it's, a, it's a, uh, I think the idea of bearing walls is always very, I don't like the word primitive, but primary. It's so easy. It's, it's the, 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 any bearing walls, it's easy to construct. And you don't have to draw, so it's it's like it's part of also this it's of this uh, process of trying to do nothing. This this trying to do with one, the beam that is there that exists with 75 centimeters. The, we don't need calculus because because the beam already exists is there. So it's it's kind of uh, of of trying to 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 to. to uh, choose that as a process too. I could complicate if I want, but I don't. I don't know how to complicate. But it's it's also a, 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 cho a choice. Uh, uh, the, the other the other thing that that um, you showed, but you 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 kind of hinted at about the rain mm -hmm. and about the connection between inside and outside. Because here, for example, everything, all architecture has to be very enclosed. Mm -hmm. And there, is, there are so many layers of insulation mm -hmm. that makes it very hard to have the kind of openness mm -hmm. that you're, uh, you're after. Mm -hmm. But you're also interested in these kinds of connections between the inside and outside, the relationship with the wall, mm -hmm. or the connection with the light. Uh, is this something that, again, you are used to in terms of sort of seeing it on site or uh, where, where does that come from in your in your work that that interest yes, I, th I think it's, it comes from the the climb i mean we don't have to do nothing about the, the, in sao paulo already it's, a, it's it's already different but in rio the, the the idea of this pavilion also was about uh feeling that uh, you are in a very, uh, it's a site where the wind is very strong, everything, the wind, the sun. So it's like to put men in this fragile condition, is to remember men that you are, how fragile we are. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, 
because uh, you, you, the, the wind was too intense for the ones that were coming up the, the building. And uh, we don't have to deal with this, that's the truth. We don't have to, to think a lot about this, only to put the, the roof bigger to protect from the rain. So <laughs> that's that, the only so thing. So this, this means that you have to have Bra Brazilian weather for good architecture, right? <laughs> yes. Is that what it is? But or, or also means that, that you need to, to, if you have the weather in Brazil, it leads to the idea of the understanding of the simple in architecture and the things that matter. And so mm -hmm. maybe the weather in Brazil is a necessary component of trying to learn mm -hmm. what good architecture should be, even when it's in cold temperature. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Or? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we have a new theory of, uh, of architecture. Go to Brazil, learn about simplicity as significance, and then come back and, and do that. Any, any other questions? Maybe we have some, some more. This one. And then Chantal has a question there at the end. Hi. Hi. Carla. Right. You said uh, one phrase that uh, I think is very powerful. I mean, let me see. Say something like don't uh, find a project, don't invent it. Uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, is that uh, as a part of philosophy, or maybe uh, just like, like the, uh, the comment about the climate and the simplicity, there is maybe um, uh, the invention within the project in that simplicity. I mean, apparently it's, uh, it's, it's very complicated to, to to build something with nothing, and at the same time, it's, it's, it's the very essence of architecture. Yes, it's a, I want to have this illusion that I didn't, the project was there, that I did nothing. <laughs> it's a desire, it's not true, but it's, it's a desire, but it's a, it's it's part of of the uh, the project. Is part of this desire of not have a presence. I mean, it's it's so it's part of uh, a lot of. I think it's part of a lot of perception of where we are, what I can do, and uh, and but this is. This is only a desire to be invisible. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. I, I was just um, very struck by what you said about that first project and how it looks like a Cedric Price fun palace kind of thing, but what you have in mind is more less an image and more um, reality. And it seems that in a way, I may not have understood the project completely, but it seems like it's this sort of empty thing that's put there, and then it collects from what's around it. It's almost like a camera that takes a picture of a certain place. Is that, the, is that a fair interpretation? And then my question would be, do you imagine it built in other places too? Like, could we have one in Cambridge or in different neighborhoods? And would that be a part of what you imagine for that kind of project? They wanted to do, build this pavilion after it was done in Rio, in many places, in Brasilia, in Sao Paulo. And for me, it was done. I didn't want to continue. It was done. It was there. It was a continuity of it. Well, it makes sense in Rio because of the geography. I think this this wind thing is, is part of the... the uh, so I think it, it is related to the geography, too, to this feeling of, 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 of being, uh, of feeling where you are. And I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't like to continue and I wouldn't like to, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, but the, the part of the picture I didn't understand, it's a picture of, is that something? Um. I guess it just, when you showed first the, the sections, they were all empty, as if there was no program inside. Mm 
But then later you showed us some very amazing images of how the different spaces had now an identity, a library and mm -hmm. certain kinds of political debate spaces. And it just struck me that it, it almost seemed as though you could put something like that anywhere and see what happened in those little volumes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was not worried about the, I was not worried about this image. Maybe it's that what you asked how about the final image. The final image was a consequence of what was needed, and uh, anything would be the same design. It wouldn't make any difference. So I was not worried. That that's why there was no drawing. There was that's why there was no study of form or anything. There was it's a consequence of a process. So so. This is this is the dream, <laughs> not to draw nothing. That 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 the result is a consequence of what is needed. So uh, this this was uh, this is the, the good result, I think, of the of the. Um, of the proposal. Well, I suppose because you asked the question because the Fun Palace was also part of, uh, part of an idea of architecture that then also gets realized. Mm -hmm. In other places, you could say that the Pompidou Center is a version of the Fun Palace because it's, it's, it's a similar notion mm -hmm. of a scaffolding of a, of a structure that then can house mm -hmm. many things in it. But I think in your case, you were being very site-specific where you mm -hmm. said this the scaffolding existed mm -hmm. for the base of the mm -hmm. for the base of the other pavilion, and you were using the topography, the landscape, and then building on that as something that was that was given. But I think it raises interesting questions about the the idea of the modular, the question of the scaffold, mm -hmm. the idea of something that can house many different things in it, and um, and in that sense, there is there is a, there is a certain sort of presence of that in some of the other projects where you have like two walls and mm -hmm. you know four four beams or something so there is a there is a kind of elemental mm -hmm. character to this which is very really interesting to see mm -hmm. how that could lead what is the how that could become the basis of a different kind of mm -hmm. um, architecture but you also showed then the view when you were decontextualizing the project and not showing it in a way in relation to the city but mm -hmm. just in relation to itself and and the site mm -hmm. as a as a kind of autonomous mm -hmm. piece which is also it's also interesting but anyway i think the talk raises lots of discussions about simplicity and the link to arte povera and to brazil and good weather mm -hmm. and uh, anyway thank you so much obrigada thank you for being here thank you all <laughs>